Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's tutorial for Lightroom, we're going to take a look at the merge to HDR. We're going to take a look at what kind of effect it applies, what options we have available to us, and how we can edit the image afterwards to get a very natural looking image that doesn't look overly processed. So let's take a look at all that now. So I've got four images that I've taken here. And as you can see, each one of them has a slightly different exposure value on it to give us a good range between the shadows and the highlights. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these to HDR and we're going to take a look at one of the options available to us to try to remove the ghosting. And what that effectively does is if you've got any elements in your images that have movement, so say for example, you've got a tree or grass moving, or in this example, I've got people walking down the main road, then there's going to be movement in the image, so each one is going to be slightly different. So the ghost option allows us to attempt to remove any of that horrible ghosted effect that you get from movement in between multiple images being merged together. So let's take a look at how that works and how we can actually use that function. So all I need to do is select all of my images by clicking on the first one, hold the shift key down and click on the last one. We've now got all four images selected and I can just simply right click and I can say photo merge or I could do control H for HDR. So once we do that, that's going to bring in the HDR dialog box. This is going to go through, align those images and give us a couple of options to choose what we want to do to actually process the image. Now bearing in mind that this is fairly sort of simple interface, we don't have a huge array of options available to us. But as you can see, it's done a pretty good starting point. So if we take a look at this now, you can see there's quite a lot of people and a good scope for uh, movement and a ghosting effect between multiple images being applied to each other. So to that effect, we've got four options down the right hand side. We've got none, low, medium and high. And we can also see it'll show us the de-ghost overlay. So if we click on that, it'll process it and show you the areas that it's using this particular function to try to remove any of those ghosting effects. So you can see where we've got people walking down the street, we've got pigeons. It's, it's working pretty well on there. And when we take a close up look, we'll see that it's done a very good job. So that's all there really is to the photo merge in Lightroom. So what we can do now is we can apply this and then we can start editing this image to correct for any areas that we don't like. So we'll hit merge. That'll take a couple of seconds to go through and process the image and then it'll create the final rendered merged image we can start working on. So once that's finished, it now creates a merged version of the image for us. So you can see we've got all images merged into one. So if we just develop that by pressing the D on the keypad, you can see we now have the merged image and we can start working on this with any of the controls we normally have. There's one thing to take a note of. Where it uses the de ghost, you tend to find you start to get some excess noise in this. So if you take a look at the image where we've got that ghosting effect, you can see that we now have multiple images have created a fair amount of noise, and you can see there's a definite difference between the people walking here and the area that's not being affected. But we can kind of correct for most of that just by simply using the noise reduction. And what we could do if we wanted to is actually paint that noise reduction on. So what we could do is come up to the top of the basics panel and we can choose the adjustment brush or we could press the K on the keyboard. And what we could do now is we could select that. And one of the options we have available to us is noise. So we could increase this up quite high so we could really see what we're doing. And then we can actually paint this noise reduction onto the image where we know we've got this problem. Now, because this is non-destructive, we can quite easily paint this effect on and then we can control how much is being applied. So we can go over the image where we can see the noise problem. Now, I'm not being particularly careful with this. I'm just roughly going over it. Come over to this side and do the same over here. So this kind of roughly covers up the, the issue. And then what you can do is you can use the noise slider to back that off until you get an effect that you're happy with. So 
a little bit of care, you can easily come through and adjust that to get rid of most, if not all, of that noise problem. So once you're happy with that, you can apply it. So we can just say close. So we've now got that noise effect being painted in there to remove any of the horrible noise we have. So the next thing we can do is we can make sure that all our buildings are lined up. So if we come down to the lens correction panel, we can try any of these options, but I'm going to go for full so it'll adjust any horizontal and vertical issues you may have in the image. We give that a second or two to actually go through and process it. And there we go. We've now straightened everything up nicely. So there's the starting point. So we've now got our very natural looking HDR image. We've got everything lined up nice and straight. We've dealt with most of the noise issues that we had in the image. And the next thing we can do is we can start actually processing any areas you want in this. So let's just say the skies look at a little bit lackluster. So what we could do is we could come down to the HSL panel, come to the saturation, and we could adjust the blues. We could do the same with luminance. So you can see as we adjust that, the sky now actually starts to pop out a little bit. We can adjust these until we get it exactly where we want, so we're happy with it. A little bit more color in there. Don't want to go too crazy. We want it to look like it's a superimposed sky. And we could do the same with the actual buildings. They look a little bit, so we say, um, subtle in their color. Whereas I know when I was there, they were actually a lot more yellow, more sort of sandstone kind of color. So we can bump that up a little bit. We can adjust the saturation, give that a little bit of pump of color. And the same with the luminance. Just to give it a little bit more punch in there. What we can do now is we can come up to the clarity, get some nice edges, and the same with the vibrance, we can punch that up just ever so slightly. And finally, for this example, I'm just going to come down and I'm going to go to the post crop vignetting, and I'm just going to add a small amount of vignetting around the edges just to draw attention and draw the, the sort of focal line through the image. So you know, you could go on forever, same as you could with any kind of image, but hopefully what you've seen in this video is how quick and easy it is to create good looking HDR images that are not overly processed, that don't look completely unnatural. And then you can come in and you can create any kind of look that you want. You can get as creative as you want with all the normal non-destructive tools that Lightroom offers you. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new tutorials we add to the channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else on our channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We try to answer every single comment that's posted. Well, until next time, take care.